This conference will now be recorded. Thank you everyone for coming to the Warren Bell Trailhead Project Public Information Meeting. My name is Christine Hocking, Senior Civil Engineer for the City. Uh, we're going to go over a couple of uh, important parts of the project, including the purpose and need, uh, the work, work group and stakeholders, uh, design elements, including obviously where the project is located, estimated costs and funding sources, the construction timeline, and finally questions and comments. Um, please hold your comments and questions till the end. We'll have plenty of time uh, to address those um, as necessary. This meeting is obviously being recorded and will be available on the Trailhead website after the meeting, probably by Friday. I'll provide the link to the Trailhead Project website um, at the end of this presentation. So with that, uh, we will move on to the purpose and need. So the Trailhead Project is located in the city of Warrenville at the south, some say southwest corner of uh, Route 56 or Butterfield Road and Batavia Road. It, is, it was first identified in the 2007 Old Town Civic Center sub area plan. It's hard to see in this uh, little uh, map. However, item K talks about improving the area between Butterfield Road and Stafford Place by creating open space amenities such as a great lawn for uh, local community uh, gardens and events and bring trail users and residents together alike in one location. So that was the basis and the beginning of the trailhead project. In addition, the trailhead location uh, as the project is located um, had a temporary uh, porta potty. So there was also a need to add a restroom facility to this location. So together combined, the sub area plan bringing gathering space also with creating a more permanent bathroom restroom facility was uh, the main purpose and need for this area. Uh, the city wanted to provide a safe and comfortable com accommodation for trailhead users, provide a gathering space for staging events and community activities. Obviously there's a lot of park district, city, library um, events that occur in the trailhead location encourage economic development by directing trail users to several nearby businesses and obviously recognizing the history and culture of the community as well as the Illinois Prairie Pack. So there were a lot of purposes and a lot of a lot of different areas we wanted to cover when we put together this project and I'll go into some of the design elements a little bit later. But first and foremost was trying to gather all of the stakeholders and so that all entities that use the space could identify what their needs were and and how the city could best accomplish those needs so in first in 2004 there was the concept obviously there's a 2007 uh, area plan 2014 the conceptual plan was put together and right after that in 2016 this trailhead work group was put together it consisted of city of warrenville staff and their consultants the DuPage County Department of Transportation, and that's pretty important, I'll tell you why later, the Warrenville Park District, the Warrenville Public Library, the Illinois Prairie Path, uh, the nonprofit that helps encourage the use of the Illinois Prairie Path, the Warrenville Plan Commission, Warrenville Bicyclist and Pedestrian Commission, as well as two uh, city of Warrenville aldermen. So all of these uh, work group stakeholders were involved in the process from the very beginning um, reviewing plans, inputting uh, their input and ideas, um, collaborating with each other, and, and overall just making sure that everyone's um, uh, needs and wants were accomplished with this project. So we were very excited to start back in 2016. The City Council directed us to also apply for grant funding because we knew that this project was going to be expensive. So in 2016, we applied for and won federal surface transportation program funding, which would cover 75% of construction and construction engineering costs. That's a pretty, pretty large amount. With that, the city council said, let's go ahead and start this project. Now, because there's federal funding, um, we had to go through preliminary engineering, final engineering through IDOT, which took about two years. We started preliminary in 2019, and then we fi finished finally 
final engineering 2020, 21, and now we're kind of, we're going into the construction phase. So let's go into a little bit more of the specific design elements and why the city and the work group is really, really excited about this project. So as I said before, this project is located between the, uh, at the south corner of Butterfield and Batavia Road. So currently that area is open grass, as you can see from these pictures. There's some sidewalks, there is an existing butterfly garden, there's an informational kiosk, some seating, uh, a bike rack, water fountain, um, trash receptacles. Uh, and then also if you go towards the south part of the project, there is the gazebo um, and, and obviously the prairie path is, is, is adjacent to the project. But a lot of open space um, and, and a couple of electrical kiosks for the city events. So this is the main project area and this is kind of what it looks like in these, these project uh, these photos as you can see there. So the design elements, as I said before, consisted of constructing a permanent bathroom facility with a covered picnic shelter area and drinking fountain, installation of bike repair station, bike racks and support components, improvements to the existing gazebo to make it ADA accessible. Currently, it is not ADA, ADA accessible and part of the STB funding was to make it ADA accept, accessible uh, re, uh, by ways of a ramp. Construction of the Illinois Prairie Path Heritage Seating Area. It's a council ring, uh, what it's called, the shape of it is in a, in a ring, and an informational kiosk about the Illinois Prairie Path and its history. Uh, it also is gonna be providing gathering space improvements necessary to accommodate community events including rerouting uh, of some of the sidewalk, uh, making a more open area for, uh, for all of these events, and adding some other necessary components like the bathroom facility, benches, et cetera. There will be some relocation of walkway lighting, some updated site furnishings, and installation of landscaping improvements, and relocating the existing butterfly garden. I'll show all of these elements in a little bit. The installation of the landscape improvements include a lot of native plantings. So native plantings are typically uh, native taller grasses, not the typical lawn grass that you see. There will be some of that, uh, a lot of that space because of the community events, but the areas that are not currently used, specifically around those large um, comed poles, uh, there will be native grasses around there. Um, the areas around the Illinois Prairie Path Heritage Display will be a mix of native plantings, kind of similar, um, and shrubs, flowering material, kind of similar to what you see around the Warrenville, um, I guess we call it the community sign, the big monument sign with the electrical um, scrolling sign. There's a lot of bushes and, and different elements, landscape elements that really bring everything together and make that area look nice very similar in this location, a little bit more enhanced. So I'm gonna bring up, um, this is a view of the plan sheet. I'm actually going to try and bring up the actual uh, design plans and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit as I talk about each element. So as you can see, we have Butterfield Road um, to the top of the page and Batavia is off to the right of the page. So this is the corner and the upper right hand corner is the corner of Butterfield and um, Batavia. So as you come from that corner and you're on the prairie path, now you will be able to take a stamped concrete um, railroad looking type of path towards this Illinois Prairie Path Heritage Display. I'll show you some of the more detailed elements um, a little bit later, but this is a more planned view. As you can see around it, lots of landscaping. There's gonna be a water, relocated water fountain, some recycling uh, trash receptacles and a bike rack in here. So if you're you know, coming off the prairie path, you wanna take a look at this uh, heritage display, just park your bike, get some water, walk around. Um, there will be the informational kiosk right there. Um, and there's stone seating on both sides of this heritage display. So let's say you're just walking through here. 
you walk through here and you need to use the restroom. So you follow this little sidewalk area to the, I guess, west um, towards the proposed restroom building and shelter. This will be a two bathroom facility, um, single user. There will be some picnic benches in um, the north side under a canopy. So those can be used by the public. And there will also, if you continue towards the parking lot, there will be another drinking fountain and a couple of uh, bike racks as well as a bike workstation. So if your bike is flat or needs you know, some air or needs a tuning, this is a, uh, a workstation that can help you out with. Obviously, you could probably also go to the bike shop just down, the, just adjacent to the project. However, you don't want to bother them. You can try and use that. So as you can see, the sidewalk area in this location is a little different than what you see existing. Um, we don't have this connection in the middle towards the Illinois Prairie Path. Um, that is new. Um, and but this whole area in the middle between the heritage display and the restroom facility is all uh, just grass, normal lawn grass. So that's where a lot of the events happen during summer days. I believe that's where the beer tent is placed. So nothing like that has really changed um, from this project, from this for this project. All of that will be all the same. There's a couple of trees and shrubs um, included in this area, but as you go towards the west, very minor improvements to the parking lot. Um, because of the addition of this sidewalk on the north side of the parking lot that is currently not there. So that will help uh, users, ADA users and regular users access the restroom facility as well as the heritage display. Right now you have to walk through the parking lot to get to you know, the east side of this or the right side of this um, plan sheet um, and there's no real good walkway. So we're, we're making that a little bit more accessible to everyone. North of there, you'll see the existing comet structure called out. This is where I said there's a lot of native plantings um, being placed here. Um, this area by the comet structure is in an easement. Um, we were not allowed to put any trees or buildings in this easement, so they were okay with native plantings. And obviously, if you look more to the west or to the left of the page, we have, uh, it's not labeled, but it says interpretive signage. That's where the butterfly um, uh, pollinator garden. So that's a very large area, bigger expanded one than where it is right now. Um, and that will be a lot of uh, plants for those pollinators, monarchs, etc. Now, if we go to the south from there, you'll run into the gazebo. Like I said, right now it is not ADA compliant, just has stairs. So coming from the prairie path, you want to go to this gazebo. You will still be able to you'll be able to access it via a ramp. So there's many different ways now to get to the gazebo. So you can go uh, you can go right to it, up the ramp, get into the gazebo. You can turn right and you can avoid the gazebo if you really want to, um, and then head towards Stafford Place um, and then connect into the parking lot. If you're coming from Stafford Place, there will still be stairs. However, you can take the ramp around the gazebo and access it from the north side. So it will be completely ADA compliant, um, which is part of the SDP funding that we have for this project. Um, I think I have a lot. I think I described a little bit of everything. Let me go back to the presentation. I can show you kind of what these items look like. make this a little bigger. All right, so this is where we're at. Some of the design elements, a little visuals of what you can see. So this is a rendering of the pavilion building, a restroom facility. As you can see, the bathrooms are accessed from the sides. You have the picnic tables in front, and you can see the, the colors. Um, we have brick and stone. We will have the City of Warrenville logo on uh, each side of these columns. Um, so that'll tie into all of the other streetscape type of elements that we've installed in the past few years um, with the columns at uh, the Route 56 bridge, as well as the monument signs all along Route 56 and Winfield Road. On the, uh, let's go to the right side is a bench. We actually added a solar um, part to this bench. It's a solar powered bench that allows you to sit there, enjoy the area, and charge your phone. It's a nice little addition. 
um, we thought would be very beneficial to this project. And the bottom left is a visual of what a bike repair station looks like. You hang up your bike, put it on there, and there's tools at the bottom that you, you can uh, do a couple things to it. Uh, a sample of what the, the uh, uh, water fountain looks like, everything from a normal top fountain to an ADA compliant part, and then finally at the bottom, the water um, bowl for uh, your pet. And then the Illinois Prairie Path Heritage Display. This was a project that was added on to the Trailhead project um, via the Illinois Prairie Path nonprofit. Um, they are contributing um, some funds to include this into the project. I can talk about that a little later. So this is the rendering that they had provided to the city council. City council took a look at it, had some comments, but in the end approved to include this and would cost share uh, the cost of this 50-50 with the Illinois Prairie Path. As you can see, we have this railroad um, component, stamped concrete. There will be uh, similar material to the prairie path limestone around the seating. In the middle, we have some pavers. In the very, very middle, there's a medallion with the Illinois Prairie Path logo. And you can see the informational kiosk uh, that will talk about the history of the prairie path. Again, this is just a rendering. This is uh, the location, it shows it next to the parking lot. It's actually not located the, next to the parking lot um, now, um, but it shows what generally it would look like, some of the nice plantings around it, how people would kind of access it from different ways. So that again, you know, it's not near a parking lot, but it is in, I think a better location at this point. So estimated costs. So obviously we are now in the end of the final engineering and we're working towards um, what's called a, a bid opening or bid letting. And so the construction and engineering construction costs are about $880,000, $82,000. So the federal STP program pays for 75% of that. So it's about $230,000 $30, local. Now, how is the city paying for this? Uh, all of the city local funding, for the majority of it, is being paid by the city developer park contributions. Now, what are these? These are developer contributions that are made when uh, a development is approved, and it's, they're made instead of the required parkland uh, dedication to fund new parks and recreational physical improvements to existing publicly owned land. City Council approved the use of these contributions for this project back in December 2020. So, uh, like I said, um, all, all of the $230,000, except for what I, the next bullet point is, is coming from those city developer park contributions. So no other, no taxpayer money is being used for this project. The Illinois Prairie Path, like I said before, is a partner in this project because the Illinois Prairie Path Heritage Display was included in the project. There's an agreement between the city and uh, the Prairie Path group to fund a 50-50 cost share. We estimate that it's about $90,000 to put that part of the project in, so it's a cost share of about maybe $40,000, $50,000. Again, we don't know the exact amount. These are all estimates because when it goes out to bid, it'll be a bid, it'll be the lowest bid. So these, these uh, amounts could change. So like I said, this is a federally funded project. So it follows the IDOT bidding schedule and the out to bid according to IDOT is March 25th. That's coming up right around the corner with a bid opening on April 26th. Now we anticipate that the project will begin, that, you know, the contract test usually takes about six weeks to get signed and then they have to start submitting um, cut sheets for all of the project elements. So usually it takes a few months for it to start construction, which is great because we wanted the construction to start after summer days because obviously summer days uses a lot of their trailhead application. So we estimate that the construction and we put this in the contract will begin after summer days and it will probably uh end in about in spring now will they work throughout the um winter 
perhaps, but all the landscape elements need to either be put in 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 the fall before a certain point, I believe November, or after a certain point in spring. There's uh, IDOT rules regarding that. So it, right now it's at approximate end of construction because we're not exactly sure how everything is going to work out with the landscaping. I kind of want to go back and talk about, I did talk about the DuPage County Department of Transportation. Um, they are a major stakeholder in this project because the location where the, the trailhead is, is actually mostly DuPage County transportation, DuPage County owned land. The city has an IGA with DuPage County to allow the city to uh, maintain and add elements to that area. Uh, we have we updated that IGA to include these trailhead there these trailhead elements. Um, so they're a very important partner in this project, and they've allowed us um, and worked with us to put uh, these elements in there and um, have worked with the review and just getting this project through to completion. So very, very grateful to them um, and just gr very grateful to all of the stakeholders. You know, as you can see from all of the design elements and, and from maybe from people that you've spoken to, this is a very important project for the city, the residents and, you know, the region. There's going to be residents, obviously, that will use this area for all the community events. Um, but there will be Prairie Path Trailhead users that will be like, hey, you know, what's this area? What What's Warrenville? Oh, this is pretty neat. Maybe we'll start our runs from here. Maybe we'll start our rides from here. Bringing more people to the area from, from the surrounding communities and, and just showing, you know, everyone what we have um, and providing a nice little area, Trailhead, um, to start their their routes, so it's a benefit to everyone, and the city staff uh, is very excited to to move this forward, um, and we hope that the residents are as well. So with that, I'm gonna take any questions and comments. Um, I'd like to first ask um, those on the phone, and then we'll go to the online um, attendees. Um, if there's anything specifically you want to ask or comment on, um, I will ask while the people on the phone are providing comments for the online attendees to please add your question or comment in your name in the chat box and I can just call on you just so it's a little bit you know, orderly. Um, obviously try and make those questions and comments uh, concise, be respectful of everyone's time. And if you think you have a very long question or comment, you can feel free to email me um, or we can meet in, in person at City Hall. My contact information is on this um, on this uh, uh, page, uh, email and my direct phone number. The project website is on there. Obviously, uh, you all had to probably go to the website to um, get the information for the meeting. I can also put that um, in the chat box. I'll do that right now. So you can just click on the link. And with that, if Let's uh, first take if there's any callers that would like to make a comment or if they have a question. Um, I'd like to take those at this time. Please state your name um, just for the for the recording and for my information. <laughs> okay. I believe I don't hear anyone. I don't, and then uh, let's go into the um, online attendees. I haven't seen any chats. However, if you'd like to speak up, oh, here we go. All right, it looks like Kay Halpin from Warren Bone Bloom. Kay, would you like to uh, state your uh, comments or question? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, we plant, we um, provide the hanging baskets along the poles along the prairie path and the um, parking lot. And I was wondering if there was gonna be an increase in amounts of light poles that we're gonna have to provide uh, hanging baskets to. 
there will only be actually we will relocate um because some of the light poles are pretty close to the edge of the parking lot those right. poles will just be slightly relocated um mm -hmm. to the other side if there's a sidewalk i'm um, going in on that north side mm -hmm. um and the only other additional light we're only adding one light pole in the project the only yeah. additional light pole is actually going near the illinois heritage um illinois prairie path heritage display um, I think it's hard to tell in here, but there's so there's only one additional light poles light pole in the project. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. And the parking lot will not change. Okay. Um, we are relocating some of the ADA parking spots um, to be a little bit more efficient with the location. Um, currently, they're both in the northeast corner of the lot, um, but to us, it makes a little bit more sense for access. Um, to provide one there, move the other one a little bit closer to the gazebo so that um, if people want to access the gazebo and not want to cross Stafford Place, um, they can park in that ADA accessible spot. So uh, so the parking lot size is not changing. Some of the spots um, in the northeast and the southwest corner might be a little bit reconfigured. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Brummel? Good evening, Christine. Well done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, great presentation. It explained everything that we're trying to do. Um, it is exciting to see this thing finally happening. Um, you may or may not be aware for some of you that are listening that uh, the bicycle shop is also interested in opening a, a coffee shop element to their operation over there, which would be a great addition to this. So we'll have a coffee shop perhaps sometime in the near future. Uh, we've got the Avalon Eve, we've got the bike shop. Um, the whole idea, of course, of this pro this project is to have people stop in Warrenville, uh, rest for a while, enjoy themselves. Um, appreciate the fact that they're in Warrenville, uh, maybe avail themselves of some of the amenities that we have and uh, then go on their way. So uh, hopefully when this is completed, Warrenville will be one of those destinations for bike rides and for hikers and for runners. Um, the whole idea is to get people to say, hey, let's go to Warrenville, let's have a cup of coffee, let's sit in the park, and then we'll go back home. So uh, very, very exciting. Um, thanks for all of your hard work. I, I know you've put an, an enormous amount of effort into making this happen. Uh, you've done a great job. It is going to be a wonderful project, and I really look forward to it. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Okay, this is Kay, this is Kay Halpin again. I have another question. Yeah, no problem. When they redid the parking lot for the library, they left they like eliminated one parking spot and they made it into a planting area just to the south uh, west of the gazebo. And uh, Warren and Bloom, we were going to be able to plant some stuff there, uh, but then we heard that this was going to you know the construction was going to be going on, so we decided to postpone that. Is that still a thing? They're going to be getting water there now. So, um, would the, is there still going to be water there? Let's see. I'm trying to pull up a Google map to see exactly what uh, the area that you're talking about. Um, so you're saying one of the parking lots was one of the parking spaces was turned into a yeah, just a, a small planting area. Yeah, the parking spaces to the west of the gazebo won't change. Right. And to the south, are you talking about on the other side of Stafford Place, maybe? No, no, no. It's just it's just a corner there between Stafford and that last parking spot. Okay. Um let's see. It's like a like a quarter, a quarter of a corner. Gotcha. I'll have to I'll have to look into that and get back to you. Um, I don't. I'm trying to just visualize what it looks it, like. Right now, it has like a it has a, a a water pump there. It looks like a water pump, but it's just water. Okay. Yeah, I see that corner now. I'm looking on the um, Google Maps area. Um, there will be construction in the vicinity of that area. Um, Obviously, the plan shows it as grass. However, um, the construction will be, it depends on the grading, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. if, if 
if that's an area that you guys want to save, we can try and work around that and have the construction try and see if we can um, save that area. Obviously, the water pump and and everything that's there probably needs to stay. So, um, yeah, we can we can we can make sure that whatever happens with that area that you guys are informed. Okay, great. That's fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great. Well, thank you everyone for attending the public information meeting. Um, again, uh, this presentation will be posted on the Trailhead website. Uh, and we are just, you know, like I said, super excited uh, to do this project, moving forward with it. And we're really happy that there's, you know, a lot of support from, from you know, the alderman, the mayor, and, and other residents in the area for this project. So um, it's a long time coming, but uh, yeah, we're really, really excited to, to get moving with this project. And, and if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to contact me. Um, I am, you know, the city's essentially the project manager for, for this project. If there's anything during construction that you see or have questions about, again, please um, reach out to me uh, during that time and we can i'm sure we can we can work through it so i uh, appreciate everyone's time again and i hope you all have a good evening thank you